Hi, it's Gracie from P3, and I'm going to tell you how to use your already made custom TensorFlow model and program it with blocks. And if you do not have a custom TensorFlow model, then you can look in the description below, and I have already made a video walking you through the process. So the first step is to go over to your code editor and click on the Manage tab. And then if you scroll down, you'll see Upload TensorFlow Lite Model. So you'll select your TensorFlow model and upload it. I have already uploaded it, so I'm getting an error message, but it should work for you. And then click back to the Blocks tab and create a new op mode. We're going to call it TensorFlow Custom Model. And you'll want to um, click on a sample for this. There are a few different TensorFlow object protection samples. We're going to want the one that says Custom Model. And then click OK. The first step. Uh, it depends on what type of camera you are using. So if you have a webcam, then you'll need to right click and disable this first block and right click and enable the second. Because unlike an OnBot, there's only one program for the custom models in blocks. So if you're using a back camera, then the default settings should be perfectly fine. But if you're using a web camera, you have this extra step. And if you have changed the configuration of your webcam from the default, you might need to click here and select your own webcam. The next step is to go down to the Call TensorFlow Object Detection Custom Model Set Model from File and change the model file name from this default to whatever your model's name was, the one that you uploaded under the Manage tab. Next, you'll need to change the labels. If you remember, uh, if you remember, each model is created with labels drawn from this data set. So your labels need to match exactly to the ones in your data set, or this program will not work. My label was called TSE, so I'm going to add it. And if you have multiple labels, then you can click on this blue gear and drag additional items under the big block. Next, you can change the minimum confidence. Now, the com minimum confidence is the threshold, the low lowest threshold of confidence that the robot holds before it declares that, yes, this is an object. I'm going to call it an object. A lower minimum thresh, minimum confidence, say 0.5, will result in more false positives in which the robot thinks that it sees a shipping element, but there isn't actually one there. But if you have a confidence level too high, then the robot will um, say that no, there are no shipping elements and where there actually are. So you want to find a happy medium. Normally 0.7 is pretty good, but if you're having trouble, you might want to come back and play with this value a bit. Next, under the set zoom, you can change the magnification of your camera. So I use a value of 1 because a value of 1 gets you the same uh, magnification as just the camera will. And my robot is set pretty close to the squares. So I want it to be able to see as big of a field of view as possible. And a higher magnification magnification will, will result in a lower field of view. And then you can also change the aspect ratio. Most cameras have an aspect ratio of 16 to 9, but if yours is different, you can change it here. So that's all of the code that you need to edit. But I'm going to walk you through what the rest of this code does. So this looks pretty complicated, but it's simple if you work through it. So here the robot is going to be continuously updating a list uh, called recognitions little r um, by calling TensorFlow object 
past a model that get recognitions, which will continuously get new recognitions, big R, which are an object that the robot detects. And then down here, under this if block, the robot will see if this uh, list of recognitions is equal to zero, and it'll say that there are no items detected. But if there is an item detected, then recognitions will not equal zero, and it'll run through for each item in the list and display the info. And, dis and there's a function he here that displays the info. And the default settings for this will display the label and the confidence of your object. You can change this to show any number of things. And if you go to under utilities, TensorFlow object detection and recognition. So you can use their left, right, top, bottom. And those four tell you how far away it is. Or sorry, they tell you and on the edge of the boundary box, either the left edge, the right edge, the top edge, or the bottom edge, how far it is from either the left side if you're using left right, or the top if you're using top bottom, the boundary box is. So if you're using left and it gives you zero, that means that the left side of your object is all the way to the left of the frame. You can also use the width and the height of the boundary box drawn and the label and the confidence, which are the ones used in the default settings. So there's your blocks um, program to identify your TSE. A couple of possible ways that you can use this program in your autonomous setting, I can tell you what my team did. What we did is we had the robot set up during at the beginning of the autonomous period to see two of the three squares. Then we had it detect the, uh, sorry, we had it detect for objects and if there were no objects detected, then by process of elimination, the shipping element had to, have been, had to have been placed in the third square, the one that was not in frame. If there was a shipping element detected, then, it, then we used the left side of the boundary box to tell if it was either in the first square or the second square. So have fun experimenting with your new program and see what happens.